Hey, Blender artists? The Blender 4.4 update is finally here, and it comes packed with some amazing new features and improvements that will take your 3D creations to the next level. From enhanced rendering speed to new modeling tools and more efficient workflows, this update is definitely worth exploring. In this video, I'll walk you through the top new features, showcase some practical use cases, and share tips to make the most of them. So, let's dive right in. In the modeling section, the Tries to Quads operator has a new topology influence setting that prioritizes even grids. Combined with the existing settings, it allows you to get significantly better results. There's also a new operator to select vertices by edge count so you can easily find and select poles. The hotkey L to select linked under the mouse now works in a new curve edit mode. Fun fact, you can also deselect linked in any edit mode with Shift L. I didn't know that one. The UV editor now uses the hotkeys Control C and Control V for copy and pasting UVs, which makes sense. The status bar now displays a helpful warning when the active object has a non-uniform or negative scale. There's also now a warning when the scale or rotation transform is set to only affect location and has no effect. The default front color for the face orientation overlay has been changed to transparent, so you'll now only see red for the back face. If you liked seeing the blue, then you can always change that back in preferences. The mesh indices overlay setting is now always visible to everybody, not just developers, and the numbers are also now more readable. The knife tool overlay now uses the same beam color as the other gizmos. In sculpt mode, a new brush type called plane replaces the flattened fill and scrape brushes. You get all of the same functionality, now with much more customizability. You'll still have all of the same brush presets, they're just using this new brush type under the hood. The cloth brushes now have the persistent option off by default, which should make them feel a little more stable. And the grab cloth brushes now use the local simulation area type by default because it works a bit better with symmetry. In older versions of Blender, if you had a crane animation interacting with another box, the crane would have its own animation action, and the box would also have a separate animation action. But in Blender 4.4, the actions are now slotted, which means you can have an action that contains the animation for both the crane and the box at the same time. I've already set this one up, and you can see that the box animation is stored in a slot over here called box animation, and the crane animation is stored in the crane animation slot. The amazing thing is, the animation for multiple objects can live inside a single action. Awesome. So how do we set this up? Let's say I wanted to add some animation to this box B here, and I want to include it in the existing action. Well, you don't just hit the button here because that's going to create a new action for just that object. So let's undo that. Before you start animating, you want to assign that existing action to the object. That's the trick. Then we can create a new slot for that animating to live. So we'll click the new slot button. And now when we animate the box, all that data is inside the same action. Whee! I'm pretty good at animation. So what if you wanted to include all of your animation inside the same action, except you accidentally went ahead and animated this box in its own separate action all by itself? Well, the developers have thought of that. Let's select our lonely box first, and then shift select any of the other objects that already have the action that we want to merge into. And then in the action menu here, we can choose the merge operator. Now you'll see our box animation isn't so lonely anymore. If you want to separate your actions, you have two options. You can separate just the selected slots. So if you click this one, it's going to move whatever slots you have selected into a new action. Or if you wanted to separate all of your slots at once, you can choose this separate slots. That's gonna create a new single slotted action for each object. So now everyone can be equally lonely. The pose library has had a little bit of love. Firstly, you can create a new pose right from the menu up here. You can also specify which library you want to put in. That's awesome. And when you right click on any of your poses, you've got three new options. You've got adjust, modify, and delete. Use adjust if you want to tweak any of the interesting channels for that pose. Under modify, you can replace all of the existing channels or add or remove selected bones to that existing pose. And there is now also a way to delete the pose from the right-click menu. If you're using the noise modifier in Blender 4.4, you'll notice that it's looking a little bit different. And that is because the algorithm has been updated to fix a bug. This change has given us two new settings. Lacronarity, or however you say it, is related to the gap between the noise bumps. The higher the number, the bigger the gaps. And the roughness is how smooth those noise bumps are. 
Of course, you only really see the effect this has if you increase the depth of your curve. It's just worth noting that your noise modifier is going to act a little bit differently in moving forward. However, if you want the old legacy noise, you can just click this toggle button here. Animation playback is up to 15% faster for meshes that have custom normals. I'll take that. When reading, now when you symmetrize bones, it can also symmetrize the bone collections. And that is swippin' awesome. Incomplete or broken constraints now no longer draw the relationship line to the world origin. That's going to keep your broken constraints looking nice and tidy. When it comes to rendering, the NVIDIA Optics Denoiser was upgraded and the results are pretty significantly improved when it comes to color accuracy, smooth surfaces, subsurface scattering, and depth of field. It does have a slightly harder time with some features, but overall, it's a big step up. The blue noise sampling pattern can now be properly distributed when rendering frames across multiple machines. The OSL shader scripting in Blender got some improvements to better align with the Material X standard. Texture baking using selected to active is now significantly faster in some cases thanks to multi-threading the geometry matching. When it comes to rendering the viewport, the overlays have been completely rewritten. You shouldn't be able to tell much difference beyond improved performance, but you might be able to notice that the origins are being drawn on top of edit mode now. There's better X-ray shading for objects set to display in front. Wires in wireframe view and in edit mode are now displayed even when the overlays are off, and curves now use the wire color option in the shading popover. The Vulkan experimental backend for rendering the viewport and EV, which is off by default because it doesn't yet support all of Blender's features, received a big boost in both stability and performance. Here you can see that the initial startup time for large scenes has been dramatically improved compared to the current OpenGL backend. It's also now used for displaying the result of cycles, though the performance there is the same. Over in the compositor, the glare node has been changed to give artists more control over the result. New outputs help visualize the glare. The smoothness value helps blend the glare so that the hot spots have a nicer roll off. You can set a maximum input value now so that one really bright light source doesn't dominate the entire scene. A new strength option combined with the new outputs replaces the previous and weird to use mix value. Also, now you can choose how much of the original input color gets used and define a custom color to tint the output with. Lastly, the fog glow and bloom sizes were corrected and are now relative to the image size, so your renders should look more consistent when you bump up or down the resolution. The wrapping option in the translate node has been changed to repeat and now works like you would expect when overlaying on a larger image. This same option will come to all transform nodes soon, but is just on the translate node for now. You can now specify the quality of denoise nodes. By default, it uses the setting in the Render Performance panel for faster results when previewing and higher quality when rendered. Just be aware that the compositing nodes still uses the CPU for now, so it's going to be much faster to instead use the render denoising when you can. In the Video Sequence Editor, text strips can now be edited directly in the preview area. Just hit Tab to edit. A bunch of other text strip improvements were added like better alignment, rounded background corners, faster rendering, and reorganized properties. Retiming keys can now be snapped and be snapped too. You can now use Shift D to duplicate elements right in the preview area. Building proxies for image sequences is now up to 30% faster and has been fixed for HDR content. And playback of HDR content is two and a half times faster now. Curves, hue correct, and white balance modifiers are up to two times faster now, and many other effects have been sped up as well. The YUV to RGB conversion for imported clips is more accurate now. Blender now respects the files rotation metadata for those who rotate videos and images with their file browser. Copying strips that have effect strips now also copies the effects instead of just flashing a warning. There's a lot of miscellaneous stuff in the interface category, and it all adds up to Blender looking and feeling better than ever. The asset browser can now sort by catalog, the previews render faster, and there's a new operator to remove an asset's preview image. And for you brave souls using a light theme, the text should be easier to read in the asset shelf. You can now lock the rotation of the three viewport if you have it set exactly where you want and you don't want to bump it accidentally. Menu accelerators, just kidding, there's no way I'm using this light theme for the rest of the video. Menu accelerators, which are the little automatically underlined letters in menus, which indicate what letters you can press to quickly choose that item, now work with toggles like those in the view menu. Full file names are now shown in tooltips, even if they're really long. Transform cursors and the little frame count cursors are now more readable. The material icon was flipped horizontally to make it stand out more from the world icon. 
Preview icons like those in the material and other lists now show a little loading icon while loading or rendering. In menus without text, they now show a slight background. Apparently, you could already use trackpad gestures to adjust value sliders, just three fingers and slide, but now you can do the same in color pickers. Lots more operators got improved status bar hotkey hints. Also in the status bar, there's a new info pop-up when hiding objects. Viewport render animation now shows a progress bar. The backspace hotkey for resetting properties to their defaults did not work with every property, and that's been fixed for a bunch of them. In the image and movie clip editors, the current frame indicator now matches the other animation editors a bit better. Adjusting and splitting editors now has a really nice snapping effect. Over in the node editors, the sidebar can now be made transparent like in the 3D view, which means your nodes no longer jump around when toggling it open and closed. Panels and node groups can now be nested, and that's reflected in the geometry nodes modifiers. Also, the border highlight in the panels has been fixed, and any inputs that don't affect the output are now grayed out. You also now drag and drop colors into the node editor. Over in the outliner, you could already use shift click to affect all children or use control click to solo for collections, but it didn't work with the enable disable checkbox. Now it does. The active collection name is now a bit brighter than the other collections. The sample color operator in texture paint mode, which has the hotkey shift X, got a new hotkey shift control X to sample the merged color. Tooltips can now show while animation is playing and got another round of polish. NDOF3 mouse input has been improved. On Windows, you can now copy file pads into the image editor so that you can use the file browser's copy command. On Mac, you can search for hotkeys using the native key names like command. Also, blend files now have previews in Finder, App Expose, and Spotlight. On both Mac and Windows, title bars now use the theme header color and can blend right in. And lastly, a big win for Python devs. In the add-on preferences, there's now a button that takes you right to the add-ons folder. When it comes to importing and exporting, videos can now be rendered using the H.265 HEVC codec, which is better for both quality and compression. And rendered videos are now explicitly set to the BT709 color space, so they automatically display properly in more apps. The render audio operator can now render to the AAC format, and when using the Matroska or AUG format, it can use the Opus audio codec. EXR images that use the DWAA or DWAB compression codec now have a quality setting. Autosave and quit.blend files are now always saved with compression. USD can now export animated volumes. Material displacement now works with the USD preview surface. Importing USD point instancers now respects animated attributes. The experimental instancing option now works for object hierarchies and non-mesh objects. Python hooks were added so developers can easily call custom functions on imported prims, materials, and textures. The import options merge parent transform and apply unit conversion scale were added, and the export options merge parent transform, units, and meters per unit were added as well. In USD and Alembic, mesh edge and vertex creases now map more accurately to Blender's subdivision surfaces. GLTF in Blender received a significant number of fixes, as well as support for managing the new slotted actions on import and export. And with that, that's everything that's new in Blender 4.4. As always, there are also hundreds of bug fixes that we don't have time to mention here, and a lot of the time for this release went to fixing bugs, so this is a great first release of 2025 and worth upgrading to. You can get it today from blender.org, and don't forget to support the development fund while you're there. Thanks so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, and happy blending.